Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for another easy recipe that um, I always love to share with you here step by step. It's always funny because some of you are always uh, uh, tell us on Instagram sometimes how surprised you are that we, uh, um, you know, manage to share this much uh, as, uh, easy recipe blogs with you guys. But the thing is, we do need to eat. This is just our dinner <laughs> that I'm making. So instead of just making it and not sharing it with, with you guys, um, you know, I just hold the iPhone in my hand and I just, you know, film whatever I'm, I happen to be making for dinner. So, uh, so don't worry. I don't, do not go too much out of my way, you know, to trouble myself too much to share this with you. Although I love doing it, but this is just because they also happen to be, like I said, our dinner, our supper or whatever you, you call it, uh, where you're from. So anyway, but, um, yeah, so what we're going to make today is since uh, it's my birthday thank you so much for all the wishes you guys especially on instagram thank you so much so since it's my birthday and we've already had a big piece of cake um it, it was really big chunky guys and i i wish many of you were closer to, to finish this with us <laughs> it's moana themed anyway 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 back to what, what we're doing here yeah did you guys did you guys see our kitchen? It's finished. You guys told us how much you love it on Instagram. Thank you. And it was so funny because many of you thought that we were trying to reflect the the, the Disney-ness in this kitchen. So many of you were like, hey, we love the Mickey Mouse color that you guys went for. Although this is not a Mickey Mouse color, it's wine uh, red. But we love the idea that you guys always link us with something Disney. Love that. Not that Disney is uh, uh, too far away in this kitchen. I mean, we have the Disney magnets. We have the Disney mugs in the kitchen. We have the Disney thingies here, thingamabob. I don't know how you call it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, you guys know that I always do that. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Anyway, let's do this. So because it's my birthday and we've already had cake, uh, I thought, why not keep it a little bit healthy? So I'm going to be making... Uh, a couscous broccoli pets to go along with our uh, fish fillet that I will be uh, grilling. So I won't be sharing with you the fish fillet because it's just, you know, it, it is a fresh fish fillet, but it is, uh, you know, prepared. So the only thing I, I need to do is just uh, grill it. Anyway, Renee, if uh, you're watching, um, you always say that you guys don't have that. Maybe I'm not understanding it correctly, but you, I'm surely you guys do have in the U.S., like coated fish fillet that you only need to barbecue or to grill, but maybe you don't, I'm, I'm not really sure. We have this brand here that's called Iglo and they have like the best uh, fish stuff that you can think of um, for when you don't have time to coat and, and, and prepare them yourself. So you just, they are fresh from the freezer, but you just throw them on there and um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so what we'll be making today is like I said, the couscous and the broccoli, uh, patties uh, for this you're gonna need um, well I happen to have the Moroccan couscous because I'm Moroccan myself but it doesn't have to be spiced if you don't if you can't find like this spiced couscous it's okay I mean I just went for this one just to add a little bit of flavor into the mix but uh, if you have plain couscous that's okay no problem so uh, we're gonna need couscous we're gonna need some broccoli we're gonna need some salt some oil some barbecue sauce here you have it again this is really sometimes a secret ingredient, medium-sized uh, egg and uh, breadcrumbs. I forgot the measurements, you guys. I'm sorry about that. So, well, and plus, I forgot the stock. Um, you can do whatever stock you like, like vegetable, beef, chicken. Um, well, I won't go with fish stock because that, um, I don't know, that won't just work out. But um, yeah, otherwise, fish, oh, for, no, I'm sorry beef, chicken, or vegetables, uh, preferably vegetable stock. So you're gonna need 160 milliliter of vegetable stock. Um, we're gonna need about 80 grams of couscous, like I just said. What else? We're gonna need about two spring onions, which I forgot to get. You're gonna need about 100, about 160 grams of broccoli. Um, what else? 30 grams of breadcrumbs. Mm, I 
then four tablespoons of barbecue sauce, or as you guys call it in the US, I think it's called ranch. Not really so, uh, sure, because some friends once explained to us that barbecue, when you guys say barbecue, you mean the meat. So that can confuse you. But here in Europe, when we say barbecue, we also mean the meat that we barbecue, but we also have something that's called barbecue sauce, which is like the name suggests, something that would go very well with barbecued meat on charcoal. No, you guys don't call that barbecue. That was that was the problem that they explained to me, to me and Mike. So when you throw meat on the fire on the charcoal, you guys don't call it barbecue. I think that was it. But anyway, yeah. You're also going to need one tablespoon of sunflower oil. Um, so since I prepared the... Um, uh, just bear with me, guys. I don't know what I have today. Um, since I prepared the, the stock, I'm going to now cook the broccoli. So for this recipe, the way we're going to uh, cook broccoli is um, uh, add some water in one of these skillets or whatever you call it. Wait for it to boil. So first it has to reach that boiling point and then add the broccoli and let them cook for five minutes. Only five minutes, guys. Otherwise, we're going to kill all the vitamins. So I'm just going to wait for the, wa the thing, the water to boil and then add this in there and come back to you in a second. All right. Let's add them in there. The water is boiling. Let's add them in there for five minutes. No longer, definitely no longer. Okay, because we need we need the firmness. Otherwise, we won't be able to create patties, you guys. So we need the firmness of the broccoli. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take the raisins out of this couscous because Mike doesn't like raisins. And to tell you the truth, I love raisins, but not in couscous. So, uh, for those of you that don't know a lot about Morocco, so Morocco has his own, its own original people, which is the Amazighs, which I belong to. Uh, we lived there before the Arab came, you know, to conquer and, um, and all that. They did one thing, <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah, they did one thing and that's the faith they brought us. I love my faith. I love Islam been studying it for the longest years together with Judaism and Christianity so you guys know that I love love faith love studying it love anyway so yeah so but yeah so um why am, am I telling you this because there are two cultures there is the um uh, indigenous culture which is the Amazighs what I belong to and then you have the Arab culture in Morocco and we both have different languages and different customs and all that so the Arabs uh, love to add raisins into the couscous the Amazighs don't so I don't I don't like my uh, couscous with raisins uh, not like in every recipe there are other recipes Moroccan recipes where I love to have raisins just not in couscous and basically what we Amazighs uh, do differently is that uh, we do love our savory food to be savory but not sweet and the Arabs sometimes tend the in Morocco tend to throw like uh, dried peach or apricot or in in whatever they're making even if it's meant to be like a hot meal that's something we don't the msc the, like the native people of morocco we don't do that it's either sweet for like dessert or uh, or not if you're making like a meal so anyway just giving you a little bit of background information about some country that you probably visit or probably never thought about it or you probably will never visit <laughs> just a little bit of uh general knowledge anyway yeah so the broccoli is done i'm just gonna leave it here drain it to just leave it to cool off a little bit and um in the meantime we're going to soak the couscous remember i told you that wait let me take this out of the way uh, so we're going to need about 80 grams of couscous and we're going to soak it with 160 milliliter of stock whatever beef vegetable chicken whatever so that's what i'm going to do and then let it uh, soak for five minutes there it is 159 so if you wonder about how much that is you know a little bit little bowl this is a little bowl see 
and, and I'm gonna let it sit and soak until it has absorbed most of this uh, stock and then I'll come back to you guys one a very important something when you make the stock uh, although I told you to do 160 milliliter of water but of course uh, you need to do the stock as the instructions tells you because every little piece of vegetable stock or whatever um, is supposed to go with a certain amount of water so uh, otherwise you're gonna end up with a very salty um, stock so we don't want that so just make it according to the instruction and then from that take 160 milliliter guys sometimes it happens when you get some um it depends on what what, what brand of couscous did you got but sometimes it stops uh, absorbing water like in this case and i do not want that because we're going to make burgers so this won't give it that firmness that i'm looking for so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drain it in one of this make sure um i'm just going to put it in there and just let let it do its thing let the water just drain itself and uh, i don't know D don't uh stir it or anything just shake it a little bit and then put it back in here so just like this bounce it a little bounce it around while you get rid of the juice that should do it Okay, so next we're gonna need the food processor. Um, one something that I can tell you about the food processor, sometimes when we work with vegetables and sometimes we don't get them as soft as we'd like them to be, what you can do is in this order, if you have a, a, a food processor, like in this case, we have the Magi Mix, and we have pretty much all the accessories, all the blades and all that. So what you do is when your vegetable is still a little bit hard and you're trying to do a recipe like this, because there are many, 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 many recipes that you can do with vegetables to turn them into burgers or patties, as we shared here with you, a couple of them. Um, so what you can do is first use the sharp blade to break, to shred the vegetable. But the downside of this is that sometimes it turns everything into porridge so what i would advise is first use this to shred the vegetable only only if it's not as soft as you would like it to be and then then use uh, for the mixing the piece that you would normally use to make dough because although it is sharp it's not it's not as sharp as the other one so since my broccoli is soft i'm not going to do this i'm just going to use this to mash them more alike together, mix them more alike together. So we're gonna add everything in here that we have so far. So to begin with, the 80 grams couscous we started with, and then we soaked it, as you saw, in 160 milliliter of stock, vegetable, whatever, beef, chicken. Next, we're gonna add the breadcrumbs. We have 30 grams here. Next, the broccoli, we started uh, with, I think it was 160 or max 180 uh, grams of broccoli that you know, we cooked for five minutes. Uh, what this will give you is about 40 patties, of, not 40, oh my God, four, since it's just me and Mike and I'm gonna do a fish filling on the side. So about four patties you should get out of this with a decent size. Next, I'm gonna break one medium sized egg in there Next is a pinch of salt, some pepper, and then I'm gonna add four tablespoons of this barbecue sauce or the ranch sauce as you guys call it in some other countries. But if you want my advice guys, don't add any salt at all because we already used the, veg the, the stock and which is salt as it is. So just leave out the salt. Guys, leave some extra breadcrumbs on the side just in case this thing is still too wet. So there it is, all the ingredients, and now I'm going to mix them. 
so there it is um before you panic and go like oh my god it's too wet how am i going to make burgers out of this let it sit for about five minutes let it just absorb some of the fluids and then if it's still wet which i expect in this case um a little bit then we can start adding the breadcrumbs and just mixing it with uh, a spoon in here so the mix is still drying a little bit still absorbing meanwhile i cleaned the kitchen counter as you guys can see and i'm preparing the hot air fryer uh, so cut a piece of um, baking paper and then just go crazy on it uh, with ho make holes in it just go crazy and make holes in it what you do is first you lay the piece of paper in there in the basket and then you take a toothpick i think that's how you call it toothpick one of these things and then you go like this well it works better with two hands but now i'm holding one iphone uh just go like this why toothpick because we do not want to damage our basket so just like this and why is this necessary because when you're working with couscous you cannot have that much confidence in your hot air fryer for this very specific recipe the couscous uh, uh, if it breaks and it falls apart it will just slip through all those holes so but because it has nothing that will contain it so what i always do in these kind of recipes is is this and i think i showed this uh on one of our christmas recipes that we made last year and you guys loved this little idea and yes it is my own idea so i do want to have the credit for this <laughs> i don't know if anyone is doing it out there not really sure but yeah as far as i know this is what i came up with uh, anyway so and it always helps to keep stuff together and keep them fall, falling apart at the same time giving them enough uh, air circulation from both sides plus you don't have to worry you do not have to worry too much about air circulations in your hot air fryer because it has this space around the edge designed to do that even if you have too many stuff going on in the basket so but yeah so now i'm going to try the mix see if i can make burgers uh, out of that if it's still so, uh, firm enough to make burgers all right guys there they are Guys, let me tell you, if you've ever been to Epcot and dined at the Moroccan signature restaurant they have there, Marrakesh, you guys know how much we love that. We always have dinner there at least once a week and the people are so friendly. Oh my God. But then again, they're everywhere friendly in every restaurant in, in all the parks, really. We never had any bad experience. Anyway, so yeah, so this will take you back to that Moroccan place at Epcot. It smells so good, you guys, I promise. And actually, at this point, once you have this mix, you don't really have to put them in the hot air fryer to make patties the way I'm doing it. You can just have it as a side dish somehow to whatever you're making. Anyway, so there they are. Remember, I told you to keep some sunflower oil on the side. Well, I forgot that I have my olive oil, so I'm not going to use sunflower. But what... Well, what the oil does is it helps it uh, become uh, really hot. That's what oil does. Oil absorbs more hot, so it helps it to become more hot and get some sort of a crust, and that's what we want. So, uh, there they are. Again, don't be intimidated. If the mixture is a little bit running, then just keep adding more and more breadcrumbs until it has the nice mixture that will help you to make patties like these ones. So now I'm going to add them in there, turn it on. Oh, <sighs> man. It always helped to have the thing in the socket if you want to turn it on. Anyway, so we're going to go for 185 because remember it is uh, soggy. So we need, we need uh, heat to, to vaporize that uh, fluid. So 185 and I'm going to put it, I think, um let me just put it first on 10 minutes see what it does i keep checking you guys like i always tell you this is not like a m magical miracle thing sometimes you know things go differently because the, the patties are too thick or t too thin or i don't know so keep checking so anyway but for now 180 degrees 10 minutes so guys 
Yeah. Um, if you happen to have kept an Iglo, uh, wherever you are, these are one of our favorites. Fish burgers, hot and spicy. It's 100% filet, so it's it's not like fake or anything. It's good. This is like the A brand. And you can prepare them, whether in the oven, skillet, or the hot air fryer. I just love how many products are more focusing now on the hot air fryer. And it really helps to lead a healthy life when it comes to stuff we eat. So, yeah. Those of you that ask about Luna, here she is. <laughs> I mean, throughout those uh, hot days that we've had and still have, apparently she tends to find this place under the table somewhat coolish. So this is this is where she hangs out. And yeah, so she had her teeth pulled out. All of her teeth. All of her pulled. teeth. Yeah, it's something that's typical for the oriental short hair, apparently. Uh, so yeah, but she's doing fine. Only now she needs to have her medicines. We need to finish her medicines until she knows. She knows, yeah. But she she does a great job, really. She knows exactly how to swallow it. <laughs> By now, she's had so many pills, sweetie. So try to turn them, flip them around halfway. I can't do it with one hand, you guys. But uh, yeah, look at oh. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this one. See? They're burgers. Nice patties. So I'm gonna turn them all, all four of them, and then let them, uh, so a total of 15 minutes. So just divide it. Maybe some way halfway flip them around. So I decided to, uh, you know, um, get rid of the baking uh, paper because now I, I know and I checked and I confirmed that they're not falling apart. So now I would like to, would like to have them roasted a little bit more. Uh, but um, on the other hand, guys, if you decide to leave the baking uh, paper in there, it will also keep your basket clean and you don't have to clean it afterwards. So, um, and it works, as you can see, it works. Anyway, so I'm gonna add them in there for another four minutes. Already done? Yeah, those are done. So guys, what this is, is it. <laughs> it's couscous broccoli burger. Huh? So uh, this is a great alternative if you're vegetarian or you you do some days meat free, which is really important to do some days meat free. Anyway, the only thing I could have added to this plate is maybe some salad, but otherwise yeah, I'm missing some salad. I know I forgot to bring the salad ingredients. But look, it's just a patty. It's a perfect burger to go on your bread. There is no bread, this is it. On. No, this is it. We're not doing it as a burger. But you could. I could have made this as a burger with a little bit of lettuce and all that. It's delicious, that I can tell you, and very healthy. So, go make your own, guys. Let me do a nice thumbnail. Looks like Mickey. Looks like Mickey, yeah. Like I, was, Mickey. I was thinking the same. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I promise you, you're going to love this. Make your own. Let us know uh, if you do how yours turned out. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, share, and we hope to see you again. All right. Have a good day, guys. For those of you that wish to see the inside, so this is how it looks. See? So it has this crust, and this is how it looks inside. Guys, that's a funny coincidence. You know how I told you about my heritage a little bit, the couscous and all that? Did you guys know that this guy from American Dad is Dutch? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> We're from Holland and we never knew. Look, he's wearing his clogs. That's just too cute. Oh, you guys. Finally. Finally some, some breeze. We've been really suffering from this heat the uh, last three weeks or something finally some heat finally some breeze i'm sorry about that my light was on so yeah so we opened the window as you can see right there and then across from this the balcony door and now you can feel this nice breeze 
like going through the house from back to front and the other way around is so crazy. There is this double current that goes back and forth. Oh wow you guys, it's really, really coming down. We just saw some tourists. They didn't check the update of the weather. So they were sitting in this little boat. One had an umbrella and the rest was just trying to squeeze and gather around. <clears throat> but it was a big boat with a lot of people, impossible to fit under one umbrella. So that looked really sad. But yeah, you guys, never forget, if you happen to have plans to come to Holland, never forget that Holland has some sort of a Florida weather, I guess, in the summer. You can never have too much confidence that the weather will stay as it is. Wow, look at that. It's really heavy rain. Yeah. That kid is running with some soda and pizza. Wow, I see uh, thunder. I've been waiting for this, you guys. Me and Mike can't really do the hot weather. This is a very welcome change. My God, finally. You guys hear the tourist scream? The one? <laughs> I was trying to oh, look at these geese, you guys. Isn't that cute? That geese family has been here for the longest time. Our neighbors that live on the boat are fishing. I don't know if you can see them. Because when it rains this hard on the surface of the canal, the fish think that it's food, some sort of food that's being dropped. So they all come up. At least that's what I was told as a kid. Wow, you guys, look. It's already over, yeah, it was too late. But it was like Haunted Mansion out there. This reminds me of the land at Epcot. <laughs> 